I hurt my knee playing footy. I could still walk around, but I had a limp. The doctor at the clinic told me that I have damaged a ligament in my knee and that they cannot fix it. So I have to go and see a specialist doctor. The doctor explained to me that a specialist is a doctor who is very good at fixing one part of our bodies. The specialist doctor I am going to see is really good at fixing bones and joints. The doctor told me I will have to tell the specialist my whole story all over again so that he knows what happened to me, so he can work out how to fix me up. He also told me to make sure I tell everyone the same story each time. The clinic staff will make an appointment for you to see the specialist. Lucky for me, my specialist is visiting in the community next week. For me to see the specialist, the clinic doctor needs to write a special letter to the specialist telling him my story. Surely they will get bored of my story soon. This is Rose. She is from a community in Central Australia and she's been having problems seeing for some time. When she saw the clinic doctor, he said she would have to see a specialist eye doctor. The doctor at the clinic gave Rose a special letter so she could see the eye doctor. The eye doctor is at the hospital, so Rose will have to travel from her community for her appointment. Today is the day that I see the specialist doctor about my knee. The specialist doctor asked me what happened to my knee. I can see that I will be telling my story a lot. Lots of people will need to ask you questions. Some questions might make you feel shame or embarrassed, but they need to know your whole story so they can give you the right treatment. Sometimes the same question will be asked by lots of different people. Try not to get upset. They are just making sure they know the full story. It's their job. He had all of my information, even the x-ray I had before I saw the specialist. He told me to fix my knee, I will need an operation. The specialist has to put me on a waiting list to have the operation. He told me mine would be in a couple of months. I didn't understand why it would take so long. I needed to hurry up and play footy. He then explained to me, even though it's painful, it's not urgent and it doesn't need to be done today. There are other people waiting for operations too. Putting your name on the waiting list means you have to wait for the other people to have their operations first. It's called an elective surgery. Putting your name on the waiting list means the doctors won't forget about you and you will get your turn to have your operation. Remember Rose, who was having trouble seeing? She saw the specialist at the hospital who told her she needs an eye operation. Her operation might not happen for a year and she would have to travel to the big city to have it done. Different operations have different waiting times. Those health mob just wants what's best for you. The health mob are busy and lots of people need operations. You may have to wait a long time for your turn. The specialist doctor will explain what operation needs to be done for you to get better. It is important you know what is happening. A lot of our mobs say yes to the doctor and they don't even know what's going on. They can't understand what the doctor is saying. It is okay to ask the doctor questions. Doctors want you to understand what will happen. So they like people to ask questions. Ask for an interpreter if you can't understand. And remember, you can say no. The doctors only want what's best for you. I thought I understood everything. But then the doctor started talking with long, big words I didn't understand. Jeremiah, you've damaged your anterior cruciate ligament. We need to repair that. That goes diagonally through the knee joint. So I didn't sign the operation consent form when he asked me to. The specialist then told me all about my operation again. He showed me a picture of the body and explained everything. When he stopped using big words, I could understand him and I was happy to sign the form. The doctor started talking to me about smoking and my tucker and stuff. I didn't know what this had to do with my knee. But then he said that smoking an unhealthy tucker would make me sick and I could end up not being strong enough for my operation. Lucky for me, I'm a young fit bloke. I don't smoke, I eat good and I do all the right things. It's really important that you stop smoking before your operation. If your lungs aren't healthy, you can get really sick and it will take longer for you to get strong again. Make sure you don't sign that form until you understand. 
and the doctor explains it all to you. It is okay to ask questions. Rose doesn't speak real good English. Luckily for her, she has a daughter with her. She asked lots of questions and explained everything to Rose. Remember, you can always ask for an interpreter or health worker that speaks your language if you are confused. A lot of our mob get scared when they find out they need an operation. It's important that you ask the doctors lots of questions so you get the full story. Don't sign consent forms until you understand everything. Ask for a health worker or interpreter if you're confused about anything the doctors or nurses are saying. I saw Dave today. He saw me at the footy yesterday and asked me about my knee. My knee has been feeling pretty good lately. Maybe I don't need that operation. He told me that if I didn't want my operation anymore, I have to go and see the people at the clinic and let them know. Gee, maybe I do need that operation. Luckily Dave is here to drive me home. Rose's eyesight is getting worse. She is going to go back to see the doctor at the clinic again so they can talk to the specialists. It's really important that if you get worse or start to have pain while you're waiting for your operation, that you go back to the clinic and let them know. The eye specialist decided to do Rose's eye operation sooner. The receptionist at the clinic rang and told me they got a letter from the hospital. I have to go into the clinic next week so everything can be organized. I just got my letter from the hospital about my operation. It's next week, but I can't make it because I have a chest infection. I let the clinic know and the clinic will ring the hospital and organize another day for me. The clinic staff made it very clear that if something happens like getting sick or family business that I have to let them know soon as possible that I can't make it. That way the hospital can help other people who are waiting for operations instead so they don't waste the hospital's time and money. The receptionist at the clinic will organize all the trouble for you. The hospital will send the hospital papers to the clinic. The clinic will give them to you. If you have any questions, see the clinic staff. Ring the patient travel people or the liaison at the hospital. Only some people can have escorts. I speak good English, so I didn't need an escort. Rose can have an escort because she is almost blind and will not be able to see it for a few days. Pick someone who will stay with you and keep you company. Make sure they are the right person to hear all your medical stories. The hospital staff really wants you to have a good escort. It might be cold there at the hospital. I better take a jumper. My Medicare card, money, healthcare card, travel papers. Lucky I'm not on medicine like Rose. Hope she remembers hers. <laughs> I nearly forgot about shoes. They don't let you travel on the bus or plane without those. Thongs or sandal are okay. The patient trouble mob will organize your trip to the hospital. Make sure you understand the information they give you. If you miss your bus or plane, you may have to pay your own way. Ask lots of questions or talk to an Aboriginal health worker if you don't understand. If you lose any of the letters or papers, talk to the patient trouble mob or the liaison officers. I had to get on a plane. Rose only had to get on a bus. If you get lost or something happens, the travel papers will tell you who to contact. Make sure you know the whole story before you leave home. Ask lots of questions and make sure you know what to do and who to contact if you get stuck. When you get to town, you will need to stay in a hostel first before your operation. Don't worry, the patient trouble mob organized it all. It's easy. It's all in those important travel papers. But if you are traveling on a weekend or after hours, you will need money to pay for a taxi. I wish I could go outside. It's cold in here. I want to bake outside in the sun. <laughs> Before you go outside, ask the staff first, because it might be your turn soon to see the doctor. Sometimes you have to wait a long time because the staff has lots of people to look after. Don't get annoyed and leave. You have to see the nurse and the doctor that puts you to sleep for the operation. I had a liaison officer with me to make sure I knew and understood what I had to do and where I had to go. He was good. They explained it all to me. 
The doctor who puts me to sleep told me that I wasn't allowed to eat or drink anything before my operation. I'm going to be starving, but it would be dangerous if I ate. This is because I could spew up in the operation and it might get into my lungs and make me very sick. If my stomach is empty, nothing will go into my lungs. The nurse told me that I would have to wear a special gown. The nurse then told me all about washing with a special soap sponge before the operation so that there are less germs on my skin. Germs can get into the operation cut and cause infections. This can cause problems with healing after the operation. You will have to sign some more forms. One will be with the receptionist saying that you are here and agree to be in this hospital. The other will be to say you have got your special soap sponge and understand what the nurse has told you. A few hours before your operation, you're not allowed to eat any food or drink. The staff will let you know when to stop eating or drinking. It's important to let the doctors and nurses know if you're not feeling well before your operation. Your operation takes a lot of planning and if you don't show up without telling the staff, you can cause lots of problems. Don't mess the hospital around by not turning up. This wastes everyone's time and it costs the hospital a lot of extra money. Oh, I'm exhausted and I haven't even had my operation yet. I had to tell my story so many times and they haven't even got bored of it yet. It's hard to do all this, but I know it helps the staff to care for me properly and to do the right treatment and operation. I had to go wait in the day unit waiting room. I was so nervous. There's Rose coming to have her eye operation. Rose is having day surgery. This means she will not be sleeping at the hospital tonight and will be going back to the hostel with her daughter a few hours after her operation. The nurse came and gave me the hospital gown to wear. The nurse had to check me. They use lots of different equipment. They say it's to check lots of stuff. My lungs, heart and temperature. The doctor who's going to put me to sleep for the operation checks me out too. He is called an anesthetist. He had to put a small needle in my hand for giving me the medicine to put me to sleep. I was scared at first, but it didn't hurt at all. I started to panic and get nervous with all these lines and arrows on me. But it's part of their job so that they do the right operation on the right part of my body. The nurses and doctors ask me my name many times too. They have to be very sure they are operating on the right person. Sometimes other people will talk to you and know your name. Don't be scared, they just work with the other doctors and nurses that have already seen you. Whoa, this is a busy place with lots of people doing different things. If I hadn't turned up, all these people would have been ready to work but have nothing to do. What a waste! They could have operated on someone else. The nurse came and got me and told me it was time for my operation. After the operation, they took me into the recovery room. I have to wait here to make sure all of the medicine that put me to sleep is out of my body. If you are in a lot of pain after your operation, don't be brave or scared. It's important to let someone know. They will always help you with pain medicine. After the operation, when I got to my bed in the ward, a nurse gave me a sandwich and a drink. Luckily, because I was starving. After an operation, it is important to get lots of rest. The nurses and doctors have to keep a close eye on you. They need to do lots of checks and give you medicines. It is important to stay in the ward most of the time, because if you miss out on treatment, checks and medicine, you may not get better quickly and it may take longer before you can be discharged home. Before you go home, the nurse or doctor will make sure you know what to do to keep getting better, when to take medicine, and when to go and see your doctor or clinic. When you leave the hospital, you might have to pay some money for your medicines. Make sure you take some money to the hospital. Also, take your Medicare card and healthcare card. Depending on what operation you have, you may have to stay in town for a little bit longer after you leave the hospital. Sometimes you will need more treatment or you won't be able to travel on a plane home for a while after your operation. Lucky for me, I can go home and see my family now. 
If you have to stay in town for a while, Pats will organize a place for you to stay. They're the same mob that organized your trip to hospital. When you are ready to go home, the travel mob will book your travel for you. This is important, because if you miss the plane or bus the health department has paid for, you will have to pay for another ticket yourself. If you leave the hospital before your treatment is finished, you will have to pay your own way back home. When you go home, make sure you go to the community clinic. Sometimes the hospital might give you a discharge summary letter. It is important not to lose it and to give it to the clinic staff. This will have the whole operation story in it and will let the clinic staff know if anything else has to be done to you after the operation. The clinic staff need to check that you have all the right medicines and if the specialist wants to see you again. You might need another checkup with the specialist to make sure the operation was done properly and to see if anything more has to be done. This could either be at the community clinic or be another trip to the hospital clinic. Don't forget you mob, doctors do operations to help us get better. For Rose, it is making her see better, but she will have to wear an eye patch for a while after her operation so that it gets better. My knee will be in pain for a bit, but I'll be back playing footy in no time. If any problems, make sure you go and see the clinic. So, that was my trip to surgery. I was scared at first, but the health mob did a really good job of fixing my knee. So, if you need to go to the hospital like I have, don't be scared to ask lots of questions because the health mob are there to help.